this research project uh, was was evaluating the use of venetoclax, the BCL2 inhibitor, in combination with hypomethylating agents and CMML. And the uh, impetus behind this is that uh, venetoclax is a, is an, an approved therapy for AML, a related disease, and has been shown to improve survival in that disease in addition to increasing response rates. Because of that, there's been a little bit of creep uh, into different related myeloid diseases, especially MDS, where there is now a phase three trial evaluating venetoclax plus azacitidine in MDS. And there is some very small populations of patients who've been prospectively treated with azacitidine venetoclax or decitabine venetoclax in a clinical trial setting. However, CMML are, are really excluded from that phase three MDS experience. And the the, the use of it has been only explored in these single center retrospective studies. There's also some uh, indications that venetoclax might not be as effective in CMML or AML secondary to CMML, which I'll we'll call CMML blast transformation. Uh, based on some post hoc analyses from AML patients where monocytic differentiation was shown to confer resistance to BCL2 inhibition and um, RAS pathway mutations, which are highly prevalent in patients with CMML and CMML that transforms to AML or also confer resistance. So we wanted to evaluate kind of the, what the real world activity of uh, HMA venetoclax is in, in CMML and CMML blast phase patients. We, we analyzed the HMA venetoclax use in, in several different settings, specifically in the those treated upfront with HMA venetoclax in both CMML and then separately as CMML and blast transformation. And what we found in both groups was that there was um, high response rates with this uh, combination. Upwards of 80 to 90 percent of patients had a had a response to treatment with HMA venetoclax in the upfront setting. The response rates in and CMML were 88%, and then the response rates in um, CMML blast transformation was 81%. The one, uh, the difference though that we we really found though is that we we did something called propensity score matching, where we found a group of patients who had a similar type of characteristics um, and propensity for treatment with HMA venetoclax, but they were treated with HMA instead, either because uh, venetoclax wasn't available yet or for some physician decision. And those patients, we, we matched them together and compared them and found that there was a significant increase in response rates, but there was no difference in survival, which is really the kind of important endpoint. So while HMA venetoclax in both CMML and CMML blast transformation induces higher response rates, it doesn't translate into survival differences. Mm -hmm. We did note, though, that there was in the CMML population a, a, a prolongation and improvement in leukemia-free survival, so you're suggesting maybe it prevents the disease from transforming to uh, leukemia. So what it showed us is that, the, that there is activity in terms of response rates. It doesn't translate into, um, into uh, survival. But one thing that I think is is kind of being explored further in, in, in our analyses is uh, what is the role of this combination to transition some to algenic stem cell transplant? So we also looked at a population of patients who were treated with HMA first and then had venetoclax added on. And in those patients, in both CMML and CMO after blast uh, transformation, about 25% of them were able to transition to a transplant. So while I, don't, I think that the results were kind of disappointing in terms of its real world activity, in terms of prolonging survival, I do still think there's probably a role for the combination in transitioning someone and, and bridging them to transplant. But this is a retrospective study and there's a lot of limitations to that. So there's, there's kind of prospective efforts going on to try to validate um, the use of venetoclax in the setting. But I think that in some ways it's it's not surprising that we didn't see the survival difference because we know that there's inherent um, resistance in, in, in certain features that are prevalent in, in CMML patients. You know, obviously everyone has monocytic differentiation and, and RAS pathway mutations are highly prevalent. 
And these things may influence who responds and who doesn't and it selects for a group of patients who just may not be as BCL2 dependent. I think future steps will kind of identify different pathways. You know, there's there's data about MCL1 inhibition and, and these patients uh, in monocytic differentiation patients. Is that something that should really be looked at? And also different targets, which we're kind of interested in. Uh, obviously, JAK inhibitors have been evaluated in this disease, something we're interested in and actively exploring as well.